real name was Priscilla and was no beauty. Don't get me wrong, she was very pretty on the outside, but on the inside, ew. Her beautiful blonde hair did fall in perfect curls, but she made three maids do it a dozen times each morning, just to be me. And while she did have big hazel eyes, they were twinkled with merriment. Instead, they glinted with malice and glowed with anger. Her pretty mouth never smiled. It was too busy pouting, whining, and yelling. Since the day she was born, Priscilla was absolutely convinced that she was superior to everybody, and she treated all her parents, subjects, and servants accordingly. She ordered them about day and night, making them run back and forth for her pleasure. She never said please or thank you. Instead, she stamped her feet, shook her fists, and complained about everything. Nothing was ever good enough. Her meals were too hot or too cold. Her dresses were too tight or too loose. The furniture was too hard or too soft, and so on. As you can well imagine, not only did Priscilla dislike everybody, but the feeling was definitely mutual. Priscilla's parents, the king and the king, were very kind. They loved their subjects and ruled them fairly. They were both extremely distressed about their only child's behavior and did all they could to improve her disposition. When Priscilla was a child, they hired the best storytelling musician to perform for her. They brought in other children for Priscilla to play with and filled her room with piles of toys. But Priscilla refused to restore so broke the musician's instruments and chased away the children. She hoarded her toys and asked for more, but she never played with them. The king and queen became desperate. They even tried putting extra sugar in her meals, hoping to sweeten her temper. But although the poor dentist was pretty busy, nothing worked. As Priscilla's 16th birthday approached, the queen, said the queen said to the king with tears in her eyes, I am at my wit's end. We have tried everything we could think of, and nothing has worked. Our daughter is awful. She will never be a good successor to the throne. And no one will ever want to marry her, even for half the kingdom. Besides, she would never accept anyone as a husband anyway. Before we give up, maybe we should consult our council once more. Perhaps someone has thought of a new idea we could try. And that's what they did. All the royal counselors gathered in a royal meeting have to offer their advice on this vexing situation. They murmured knowledgeably and scratched their heads wisely, but no one could think of anything to say. After 16 years, they were all out of ideas. Eventually, everyone realized that somebody would have to say something. That was one of them. <clears throat> that was one of the counselors. He was retiring soon and felt he could take a little risk. <clears throat> Let us approach this problem practically. For 16 years, we have been racking our brains to determine how to make Princess Priscilla more pleasant. Perhaps we should approach this dilemma from another angle. When is the princess most pleasant? This was a difficult question. The princess was seldom in a good mood. Finally, after a lot of head scratching, one counselor said brightly, The princess seemed to be in a good mood when I saw her yesterday. Well, what was she doing? She was, um, twisting the royal cat's tail. As you can imagine, the counselor wished he had kept his thoughts to himself. Yes, well, thank you. That wasn't exactly what I was looking for. Oh, what's the use? Priscilla is only pleasant when she's sleeping. Aha, that's interesting. Sleep is known to have creative and soothing powers. Maybe all the princess needs is a long, nice sleep. What do you mean? Priscilla sleeps quite well. Even if the bed is, is never made for her satisfaction. When I say long sleep, I mean really long sleep. One that may last for years if necessary. For years? How is that possible? Well, we would have the court magician cast a spell that would make the princess sleep until her temperament, uh, shall we say, mellows. I guess that might work. What if she never mellows? You can't just let her sleep forever. I haven't. The spell will work until either the princess becomes pleasant and happy or until 100 years have passed. If she is still sleeping after 100 years, a prince will find her, an alarm will go off, waking her and ending the spell. We have to think about this for a while. No matter how annoying and mean she is, Priscilla is still our daughter, and we must do what's best for her.
They laughed horridly. Then ha laughed horridly while the, they scrambled to pick up the broken dishes and clean up the food. She kicked her pet dog man to the feet. Cardinal descended flying across the room and snipped the blossoms off all the flower arrangements which she doesn't like. During the party, she continued to enjoy herself. While dancing, she stomped on her partner's feet with spiked heels, which she wore specifically for that purpose. When all the guests in her fancy clothes sat down to dinner, Priscilla spilled red wine and threw food at everybody seated at her table. The guests were horrified but said nothing. After all, she was the princess and it was her birthday and no one wanted to make her madder than she always was. The king and queen sat helplessly and watched while their daughter tormented the honored guests. They knew that if anyone reapproached Priscilla, she would throw a tantrum. Remember, she's 16. Finally, the time was for opening gifts or wrap. Priscilla ran to the pile of beautifully wrapped packages and began ripping golden paper. As she tore each present, she made fun of it and the person of it, who gave it, obviously. Nothing was good enough for her, and she let everyone know it. Eventually, she opened the presents that contained the spindle. A spindle? Who ever heard of a princess spinning? I certainly don't intend to spend my time on such a stupid activity. Spinning is for servants. But I think I will make good use of this sharp point. Yes, indeed. It'll help me make the servants move faster. Oh yes, this will do just fine. If the guest office behavior was strange, they did not mention it. They were only happy to see their, to say their goodbyes and tiptoe tip out of the palace. Most of them had come to the party out of respect for the king and queen, and while they pitied the poor couple, the guests did not want to spend any more time with the unpleasant princess that was abs absolutely necessary. After the guests left, the king and queen placed their daughter in a tower just outside the castle wall, so that prince was more likely to find her than if she did not have to go through the whole palace to reach her. The queen put the spindle near the bed as the sight of it made her too sad to keep it in the castle. The king and queen made sure Priscilla was comfortably and beautifully dressed, that the room was warm and clean, and they visited her every day. As time passed, fewer people remembered Priscilla, and the tower in the wood became the center of many legends. The only true thing people remembered was Priscilla's great beauty. People added new elements to the story, creating fairies and angelic witches to make it more interesting. Someone even insisted that a princess was cursed because one fairy spoke, spoke, spoke when she was not invited to the birthday party. And so the sleeping princess became more and more mysterious until no one, no one remembered how nasty Priscilla had been. About one year after Priscilla went to sleep, a prince was riding through the forest around the walls of the old castle. He had heard many stories about the beautiful and mysterious sleeping princess, and as he was rather conceited, he, sure, he was sure that she was meant for him. He spent days wandering through the forest hoping to go to the palace. The thorny branches tore at his clothes and skin. He and his horse were tired and hungry, but the, princess, but the prince was determined to accomplish his mission. One morning, he spied the tower, which was lit by the rising sun. The prince hardly noticed the few hours as he hacked his way through the brush. He was busy imagining what the princess would look like and composing what he would say to her. When the prince finally reached the tower, he found the door open. He flew up the curving stairway, breathless of anticipation. The stairs ended abruptly, and suddenly the prince burst into a big room, in the middle of which the princess was sleeping on a large, luxurious bed. Until this moment, he realized that he had not been completely convinced that all stories he heard were true. His knees grew weak, and he had to hold onto the wall to keep him from falling down. The princess was breathtakingly beautiful, as he had imagined her. For once, her face was relaxed and not screwed up in a scroll. Her face, her many curls spilled onto the pillows, framing her face, and her clothes were very becoming. The century-old fashion was just coming back into style. Once the prince reclaimed his wits, he slowly approached the bed, sets off an alarm clock. <laughs> Sacks and waits to see whether the enchanted princess would wake up as much as she would. The story was true. When she looked up and saw the prince gazing at her with love in his eyes, without a second thought, she reached up and slapped the prince across his glowing, unsuspecting face. You see, Priscilla is not a morning person. The door astonished, the prince stumbled and fell backwards, and all the words he'd composed flew out of his head. This was certainly not what he expected. What in the world do you think you are doing? How dare you barge into my room and wake me up? Guards! Guards! The prince 
prince never told anyone what happened. He was sure no one would believe him, or that anyone who did would laugh at him for the rest of his life. One thing he did know for sure, he would be a lot more careful about who he wakes up in the future. Meanwhile, Priscilla was becoming unhappier by the second. She soon, she soon realized that she was not, her, not in her room at the castle, and that no one was rushing to answer her call. In anger, she destroys the room. Spots the pindle, the spindle, the enraged princess grabs the spindle and aims it at the window. But as luck should have it, one of the spindle sharp ends pricked Priscilla's hand. Unfortunately for Priscilla, one hundred years has not erased the spindle's magic, and she began to feel very sleepy. She barely had time to crawl back into bed before her eyes closed in a deep and peaceful slumber. Here, Here ends the real story of Sleeping Beauty. As far as I know, she still sleeps in her tower, her court is still beautiful and still unmellowed.